Hi, I'm Kristen, and this is the Simple Handmade Everyday Podcast, where I talk about living a creative, intentional life. I like to chat about quilting, sometimes knitting, what I'm reading and watching, and a little bit about keeping a cozy, organized home. I've got my cup of tea in hand, so let's settle in for a chat. This is episode 41. Welcome, or welcome back, depending on your situation. We've been picking up a few new listeners, and if you are one of them, you are very, very welcome here. And as always, thanks for the the return listeners. I totally appreciate you guys. So let's get down to business here. How have you been? It is uh, kind of mid-January 2020 right now, and I just got back from a business trip to Orlando, Florida, where I did not go to Disney. That seems sort of criminal, doesn't it? It actually doesn't hold as much sway with me because I'm from Southern California, so I've been to Disneyland lots and lots of times. But I really could appreciate what a difference Disney World is than Disneyland just from being around Orlando. We did go into Disney Springs for dinner a couple of nights, which um, for those of you who are in California is like downtown Disney, but on steroids. (laughs) It's like almost, it's free and it's just mostly restaurants and shops, but it almost seems like an amusement park in its own right. And the the restaurants were amazing. So um, I've got my fingers crossed that it will be a successful business trip. Um, it could make a big difference to my marketing business, which is what I call my, my paid work. <laughs> so anyways, fingers crossed for that. But it's good to be back. Good to be back to routines. Um, I'm kind of a creature of routine. And as much as it was really fun to, you know, to fly, to go across the country, it's just kind of nice to be back doing doing what we do here. Um, one of the, the new routines that I've been doing since the beginning of 2020 is I've been doing this thing called the Start Today Journal. Um, I don't know if I even talked about it as a book that I read, but I read a book by Rachel Hollis called Girl Stop Apologizing. You might know her from Girl Wash Your Face. Um, that was her big hit. And I have to say, um, I've got real mixed feelings about Rachel Hollis. She's a little, a little raw, raw for me. I'm just, I'm just not like her. <laughs> I am not honestly as driven to, um, to make millions of dollars and have a huge business as she is. And that's fine for her. But I think you can still pick and choose the little tidbits. I mean, she's obviously very successful. And I think it's good to pick and choose, you know, what I can take from her. So she um, talked about this uh, thing. I guess she's got a podcast. I've never listened to it. And um, about how she journals. And then they turn that into a product, which you, even she says, you don't need to buy the Start Today Journal. Um you can just make one yourself. And that's what I did with the notebook. And so the idea behind this journal is that you write five things that you're grateful for. Um, So, you know, it starts out as a gratitude journal, which I've done before, but this kind of formalizes a little bit. So five things you're grateful for, I think of as sort of um, from the day before, because I do this early in the morning. And they're not like, you know, my family, my health, you know, my home that as much as those are really that that sounded so dismissive didn't it it's not like those are not good things to be grateful for but it was more like um the the small little things and it and by writing down five kind of small things that you're grateful for it kind of primes your brain to start looking for those things during the day and the more you know scientifically the more gratitude you have the happier you are so you know they can be things like you know for me (laughs) I like my travel uneventful. So, you know, a a smooth, a smooth flight um, back to drinking like my own coffee, (laughs) you know, just little, little things like that. The fact that, you know, my son um, did all the vacuuming for me yesterday, that, that kind of stuff. So you start out with five things of gratitude and then you write 10 dreams um, and she actually, you can go on her website. Maybe I'll try to find it and put a link. Um, what's it called? It's like 10, 10, one is how you come up with your dreams are you think in 10 years, what do you want your life to look like in 10 years? What is your ideal life? So that's the first 10. And then this 10 is your 10 dreams. So based on what you want your life to look like in 10 years, come up with 10 dreams that will help you be that person. And the thing about that is that you, so you can call them dreams. You can call them goals. 
um, the same kind of thing. But the difference with this little journaling technique is that you write them as though they've already happened. You don't say, I, I want to lose 20 pounds this year. You say, I, the way I put it is, I easily maintain a healthy weight. I regularly strength train, which is a thing that I really need to do, but I don't. Um, I am a creative cook. I save X amount of dollars per month. Um, I planned a great vacation for my family. Um, I use my time well, Th these kinds of things. Um, so instead of saying like, it's my goal to stay off social media, you can just say, I, I use my time well. And this really dovetails in very nicely with the um, atomic habits um, idea that part of creating good habits is, is stepping into the identity of, of the person that does those habits. So, um, you know, so whether you want to lose weight or read more, I never understand people who want, who, who uh, have as a goal to read more, because that's just one issue. That's not my issue. I, I read plenty. Um, but you know, so to say I am a reader or I am an athlete or so you get to kind of get into that identity thing. So five things of gratitude, 10 dreams written as though they've already happened. And I have to tell you, um, I try to write them um, in the same order every day. I've sort of um, committed them to memory or I'm trying to commit them to memory anyways. And it's a really good reminder by rewriting the same list every day that like, okay, I'm saying I'm a person that regularly strength trains, but I haven't started that yet, which is fine because you don't have to start every goal in January, right? Um, so, but it it reminds me that this is something that I'm striving for, and it reminds me of every day of it every day because I'm also the kind of person that says, "Oh, I read this cool thing about, you know, how to do this, and I'm going to start doing this," and then I just immediately move on with my life and forget about it. By but writing these every day is very helpful. And then the last part of it, which is why it's ten, ten, one, ten year person. You, you want to be in ten years, ten dreams, and then the one thing you're going to do today to focus on one of those dreams. And she really very much advocates focusing uh, most of your energy on one of those dreams. And it doesn't mean you, you know, like if I am focusing on strength training that I can't also, you know, be trying to eat right and save money, you know, but there's, but your main focus can just be one thing. So anyways, um, I just wanted to share about that. Apparently these start today journals are available in some targets. Of course, that stuff is never available where I live. Um, and again, you don't even need it. It's just, um, something you can do with a notebook. And so I've really, uh, I've been enjoying that because it very much goes along with um, my word of the year, which I meant to talk about last time and I didn't. I've had many different words of the year. And again, I usually pick one and then I like have forgotten what it is by January 15th. I know that my daughter's, um, her senior year of high school that year, I know it was cherish because that was going to be the last year that we were all together and the way we had always been. So I remember that one. Um, I know I've used the word uh, had the word consistency before, but I was not consistent <laughs> in thinking about it. This year's word is action. I just feel like I've been doing a lot of thinking and a lot of planning for years now, and it's just time for me to just step out in faith and do some things. So action is my word of the year. And um, yeah, so anyways, I just wanted to share um, those things with you. So let's pause for a second and talk about what cozy thing we're drinking in our mugs here in January. Or if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, and I'm so sorry if about all the stuff that's going in, in on in Australia, it's just, it's horrible. So maybe you're drinking some iced tea there, or I don't know. So I'm drinking the same um, Ikea tea um, that I was talking about last week, and I've been enjoying that very much. Apparently it means in Swedish, I'm going to forget now, roughly translates to... Um, taking some time for yourself. Um, and I've already forgotten what it's called because it's just a bunch of alphabet soup to me. I'll put it in the show notes. Um, it's a very nice black tea with a little bit of uh, fruitiness to it. But I actually wanted to talk to you about this tea that I bought uh, my daughter Chloe for Christmas. It's Harney and Sons Paris. And um, I just, you know, I was intrigued by the name of it. And uh, it is a fruity black tea with some vanilla and caramel notes to it. And um, it's delicious. And I've mentioned a million times that I'm not really into flavored tea and I wouldn't really call it overly flavored. 
But my daughter love, love, loves vanilla. And so it was perfect for her. So for Christmas, I got her the the perfect tea maker and some Harney and Sons tea. And that's where you, uh, you know, you put the loose leaf tea, which is what I got here. And into the perfect tea maker, you pour it with your, you know, your boiling water. You let it sit for however long, like three minutes. And then you take the whole little perfect tea maker and you put it on top of a mug, which pushes up a little mechanism in the bottom of it. And, and then the tea just drips right into your mug, but leaves the tea leaves behind. And when you're buying quality tea, you can use those leaves a couple of times. And so, you know, so I like to do this um, in the morning. I make my first cup of tea. And then a couple hours later, I just boil some more water and pour it back in the perfect tea maker. And I, you know, I could do that like three times, which makes the more expensive, high quality loose leaf teas a lot more affordable if you think about that you're getting two and three times the number of cups from them. So Harney and Sons, Paris. I loved it very much. I will put a link in the show notes. Fat Quarter Shop is a one-stop show for quilting fabrics and supplies for quilters around the world. They stock quilt shop quality fabrics, pre-cuts, quilt kits, patterns, notions, and even cross-stitch supplies. This month, Pure Element Solids from Art Gallery Fabrics are the basics of the month, which means they're 20% off. Their unique dip dye techniques leads to the most brilliant colors ever. All dyes are the most environmentally safe to use in the sewing industry. Often known as Pima, their premium cottons have the softest feel and lowest shrinkage of any solid you'll find. I'll put a link in the show notes. You know what? I'm using art gallery fabrics, including the solids, for a project that I'll talk about in a little bit. And I have to say, that fabric is so soft. So I'm absolutely loving that. Let's talk quilting. And let's talk about the Fat Quarter Shop again for a second because they are sponsoring an event called Pillow Fight on their blog, The Jolly Jabber. So I've talked about this before. Um, Fat Quarter Shop has a publishing arm called It's So Emma Patterns, and they have published a book called Pillow Talk by Adidas Sitar of Laundry Basket Quilts, and it's uh, a book of 25 beautiful pillow patterns. And so what they've done is they've taken different quilters in the industry and pitted them against each other, each one making a pillow, um, and then uh, asking the public to vote on the best pillow. And they have a whole chart, you know, like brackets, like, like for football or something, on the uh, on the Jolly Jabber. The first week was uh, Kimberly Jolly from the Fat Quarter Shop and Adita Sitar going head to head. I think Adita Sitar won. Um, and then the second week was Elise from Elise and Emily and Jen from Heritage Threads went head to head. And I don't even know uh, who won that one. They were both uh, amazingly uh, beautiful pillows. Um, but I bring this up because the day that this podcast goes out, my BFF Minky, Kim, and I are going head to head. And I need to activate the masses of Simple Handmade Everyday listeners to go vote for me. <laughs> or should I just say, go check it out and vote your conscience. But um, so yeah, I'm very excited about this. Um, I talked last time about the fact that I actually very unimaginatively used one of the kits that Fat Quarter Shop is offering. Um, so they are the, the the fabrics and the colors that Adidas Sitar had imagined, and they it, that kit was such a treat to use because they were diamond shapes, and um, so everything just matched up so perfectly. So it just it was a lot of fun. So please go vote for me. I will put a link in the show notes. Go do it now. I will wait. <laughs> um, the other thing that I've been working on is um, if you belong to the Hand Pieced Quilts Along Facebook group, and I, if you don't, I will put a link in the show notes. Patty and I announced that there will be a Hand Pieced Quilts Along 2020 happening. I am madly sewing my little fingers off now trying to get that um, that quilt top done. I have redeveloped um, that callus on my left middle finger where um, I hold uh, is under the fabric and as soon as the as I'm piecing as soon as the the needle goes through the fabric and hits my finger then it's time to sort of go back up again and um, so yeah I had lost that callus because I hadn't been hand piecing but man do I have it back and that little that poor little finger has been stabbed thousands of times <laughs> at this point um, but it was nice because when I went on my trip um, to Orlando, I was able to take um, 
the hand piecing with me and I was able to hand piece in the airport and um on the airplane, I was in a center seat, and you know what? I'll admit that I was a little embarrassed to get it out. It's so much easier, honestly, to knit in public than it is to hand sew because you just need, you know, more gear, more gadgets. But I just got over myself, and um, because I want to take step out pictures and stuff for the blog post that will accompany the hand piece quilts along, um, I would just kind of sewed together units and I, I didn't wasn't able to really finish any blocks but I got pretty far and I've I've um, whipped out I've put together three blocks since I've been home and uh, that's just been really fun and again I'm using art gallery fabrics um, for that a uh, curated bundle called um, color master in this really icy blue I've had a few little sneak peeks in my Instagram stories of just what I've been working on um, and I'm just loving the feel, the feel of this, uh, the fabric. So that's been super fun. I don't know if I had my quilt back from the long armor um, for my last podcast. I kind of think maybe I didn't, but my sweet confetti quilt came back from the long armor, who is uh, Diana, uh, sorry, Deanna Sanzano. And um, I love it. I love it. I picked a different motif and it's just, it's very swirly and feminine. And I'm really looking forward to binding that, but that is going to definitely take a, a back seat until I get this uh, handpiece quilt along quilt done. But I've sat down and I made a list of um, my whips and UFOs that I really want to get done this year because I just am done with carrying these things forward year to year. And I wanted to share with you two ways to sort of stay accountable um, for moving forward on these projects. I've talked about this one before, the one monthly goal by Patty of uh, Elm Street Quilts. Every month you can, um, on Instagram or on your blog, just sort of make a statement about, you know, share what you want to finish that month. And um, and then at the end of the month, you do a little check-in. Um, if you've done it, again, with a, a picture or something, and she has a link up on her blog and um, you can win prizes. And she has amazing sponsors. So that's kind of a little, um, you know, fun way to stay accountable. I've done it a couple times. I'm usually just sort of not organized enough to... <laughs> <laughs> to do those posts, but I encourage you to do it. The other one um, is Sarah Goer, and she's got a great quilting blog. She's a, a great a modern quilter, and she's doing a finish along. And again, I was not organized enough to do it for Q1, but she's gonna. She does. She's doing this quarterly on her blog and Instagram, I believe, where you again make. Um, you can just like write down, you know, the projects that you want to finish in that quarter and take a picture of it and stay accountable. She's got a little um, chart that you can um, download. And, uh, and again, you know, I think, and you can just use that as accountability. So definitely check out One Monthly Goal by Elm Street Quilts and um, the Sarah Goer Finish Along. I've got some um, books that I want to talk about too. So I've already got them piled here. I've already talked about Pillow Talk. Um, the next one I want to talk about is called The Sisterhood of Scraps. This is by Lisa Alexander. Um, you may know her as Moda Lisa um, on Instagram. She is the um, marketing person for Moda Fabrics. So she's a very she's a very big deal in the industry. And she's got a new book out from Martingale. And it's a super cool idea. And there's so many cute quilts in this book. So it's obviously all about scrap quilts. And she talks about how um, the quilting industry, you know, how we quilters, it's like a sisterhood. And there's even a little certificate at the back that you could frame and put in your sewing room saying that you are an official member of the Sisterhood of Scraps. And um, so the idea of this book is that she um, picked six quilters in the industry most people you you may know and they would each design a quilt based on some sort of a block um, squares nine patches four patches half square triangles so so um, they would do one and then she would do one and um, and they're presented you know like one after another this reminds a little bit of the um, the Sunday best quilts that Corey Yoder and Sherry McConnell did where they each um, again you know 
each did a quilt based on the same sort of design specs. So some of these quilters, um, the designers in the book are Lori Simpson, which is from Simpson and Minnick, you know, fabric designers, Sandy Klopp, Cheryl Johnson, Kim Brackett, Barbara Brackman, Susan Aki. Do you know her? She is um, Yard Girl 60 on Instagram and her work is amazing and she's also a super cool cross stitcher so these are the people that she um invited to do patterns with her so like the first one for instance is called 49er it's by laurie simpson and it's basically it's based on four patches and nine patches and hers is um a bunch of blues and off whites and it looks amazing and then um then lisa did one based on those same two blocks but just put together very differently and she used much brighter colors you know like lots of reds and yellows and greens and blues so it's a more of a you know kind of a rainbow it's beautiful but they look very different from each other so it's um you know so just a lot it's kind of inspires you to say you know what we can use these same um, units but we can use them very differently and we can use up your scrap pile so there's ones based on log cabins and half square triangles um, to basically riffs off of a trip around the world which is a quilt that I really need to make I really need to do the trip around the world um, yeah it's, it's definitely a bucket list for me and then for Barbara Brackman um, she picked a you might know her as a quilt um, you know, she's like a quilt collector. So she pulled like an antique quilt out and, um, and then sort of remade it in a more modern way called the modern, the, the mini orange zigzag. So, um, definitely if you're looking, if, if, if like it's on your bucket list to deal with your scraps this year, Sisterhood of Scraps, um, totally recommend that book. I will put a link, um, in the show notes and, uh, you know, for, for your pleasure. The other book, I love getting books in the mail. It's so exciting for me. It's called Patchwork Gifts, 20 Charming Patchwork product Projects to Give and Keep. And it's by Elise Owen here. I'm not sure I know how to say your name, Elise. I'm going to say Bayek. Elise Bayek. B-A-E-K. I'm sorry, Elise, that I don't know how to pronounce your name. Um, this is a gorgeous book. It's by Tuva Publishing. And... Um, this is also really very scrappy and patchworky. So let me just tell you, I'm going to open this book. I'm going to look at it. It is not just a quilting book, but it is very patchworky. It's one of those um, books that have a lot of fun little projects. So if you want a quick win, if you are doing swaps or you want, um, you know, just to give stuff to your friends for gifts, for you know, um, when you go over for dinner, hostess gifts or homework, housewarming gifts, stuff like that. Perfect book for that. Um, also not, you know, you can obviously use whatever fabric you want, but, um, this is definitely a book that has a lot of Liberty inspiration, a lot of, um, flower sugar from Le Cien, you know, that sort of, um, flower sack kind of look, Japanese print kind of thing, like a, a lot of super cute gifts. There's going to be a book a tour for this one and I'm super excited about that and I am very much figuring out which which one of these adorable projects to make and I have not decided there are several um, coaster um, patterns one that looks like little houses and one that's uh, uh, circles a little mug rug with flying geese a, a, a glasses case a cushion a notebook holder I might do that one a linen and scrappy um, notebook cover. I could make one for my start today journal. Okay, I, that might be what I'm going to do. Um, several little um, trays, little patchwork, like based on a log cabin block, little trays to keep, you know, buttons or notions in, um, luggage tags and a passport, uh, passport holder, a baby quilt, um, little lavender sachet. So this it's you know, one of these very small project kind of books, and but they're just adorable and there's these little mushrooms on the cover that are just so sweet I think they're like a pin cushion super super cute so um I'm going to be uh, making a project from this book and I'll keep you posted on that but um, I think you can pre-order this now on Amazon it's called patchwork gifts and obviously I will put a link in the show notes and if you're thinking about it just you know if you wouldn't mind going through the show notes um, I do get a tiny little affiliate um 
income from those kinds of things when people purchase through that way. And that just kind of helps me, you know, kind of keep the whole podcast thing going. So I appreciate that for what it's worth. Let's move on to books. I have been, as I was last uh, podcast, again, working my way through the Clifton Chronicles by Jeffrey Archer. I get so obsessed with these things. So I think I talked about the fact that I started listening to these because I've read them before to help me go to sleep when I when I couldn't sleep. So I completely missed large sections of it, but I sort of started paying attention around the middle of book two. And then I've done book two all the way through, I think book six and I can't get book seven from Libby. So um, the very last book, which is sad because I would have liked to finish it off. I'm going to keep my eyes open for that. Um, But when I ran out of those, I realized that I had not listened to book one and I'd missed about half a book too. So then I wrapped around (laughs) and I finished book one and now I'm on um, book two and I will probably abandon it once I get to the part where I started. So, so silly of me, but um, and I, in the uh, hand piece, not the hand piece quotes along uh, Facebook group, but the Simple Handmade Everyday Facebook group, um, several people have been saying that they have been um, reading and listening to those two. So it's not just me. They're very popular. Um, so I definitely recommend those as I have, keep talking about. But I feel like since December till now, I've listened to all the Louise Penny books and all those Jeffrey Archer books. So it's, it's like 12 books. <laughs> I've been obsessively listening to audiobooks. I'm a little worried about um, my hearing because I've always got earbuds in and I usually just do one earbud and I got those wireless earbuds um, that are like AirPods, but they're knockoffs and they sound just great, great, like for when you're listening, but I've learned that the the microphone on them isn't the quality of, um, of an AirPod, but they cost like 35 or 40 dollars and AirPods are like $170. So, you know, I think I, I did okay value wise there. Um, but anyway, so I've been just obsessed with those. The other book that came up in my, um, some sort of Facebook group I'm in is a book and it's not a new book, but it's called Steal Like an Artist, 10 Things Nobody Told You About Being Creative by Austin Cleon. And I just got it from the library. It's a, it's a little square book. And I'm really enjoying it. And it is very much about um, how there's basically nothing new under the sun. And um, there's there's stealing and then there's stealing. You know, there's being inspired by um, other people's art and there's, uh, you know, stealing it outright. And so I'm not I'm not even that far into it, but I'm very much enjoying it. It was um, he's done uh, several other ones since this one, which was a, a New York Times bestseller. So I definitely recommend that. Um, and. I'm looking forward to reading a few other books, which I have not actually gotten to. I talked about two of them last time, Nothing Ventured by Jeffrey Archer, um, which is weirdly uh, about a character that that is um, a fictional character that's in the Clifton Chronicles, kind of a weird thing. And then The Giver of Stars by Jojo Moy. So um, I got those both for Christmas. And you know why I haven't read them, weirdly, is because they're real paper books. <laughs> <laughs> and I so often read at night and read on Kindle, so I don't need to have a book light and things like that. So um, I just haven't worked reading paper books back into my life yet, which just sounds ridiculous. I never thought I would say that. Um, and the other book that came up, I think, in the Quilt Fiction Facebook group by um, by Francis Dow, um, people were sharing uh, books that they're reading. And I love, you know, like a good, you know, crafty mystery or just crafty literature, crafty fiction. And there's a series um, called, well, the the first book is called Yarn to Go, a yarn retreat mystery. And it's by Betty Hechtman. And I have no idea if it's any good. If you've read it, let me know. But it's the first one of um, many, you know, like a whole series. It apparently includes a knitting pattern and a recipe. (laughs) So um, I'll let you know what I think about that, but no, no uh, endorsement at this point. Um, What I've been watching on TV last night, it was very exciting. I sat there doing my hand piecing and I started watching Anne with an E on Netflix. I've been waiting to do that, just um, haven't, well, when you're obsessed with audiobooks and it really, you know, your TV watching time really takes a hit. You know what I was deciding that this whole sewing, especially hand sewing, but also machine sewing and knitting, it's like you can have two hobbies at the same time. 
that you're sewing and reading, like listening to an audiobook, which is kind of amazing. <laughs> so it's funny, as I've been listening to a lot of audiobooks, I feel like an idiot just sitting there listening, where if I was reading a paper book, then I wouldn't feel dumb sitting there. But and I cannot like knit or sew and read at the same time. I really wish I could not coordinate it enough. But um, but yeah, I was like, wow, I get to, you know, listen to this book. And so at the same time, it's, you know, like kind of an amazing thing to stack your hobbies like that. But I started Anne with an E. A man, do I love the casting of Anne, of, the, of that whole show. Um, you know, the, the Anne is is perfect. She, she's got the red hair and she's not overly beautiful. She's exactly what Anne is supposed to look like. Um, the Marilla is cast perfectly. Matthew is cast perfectly. So I um, really enjoyed that. You know, they are so far afield of anything that ever happened in the books at this point. So you kind of have to let that go, which was a little weird for me. Um, is this the third season? I feel like this is maybe the third season. So at the end of, I'm going to say the first season, it started to veer off. Um, and that's, that's totally fine. I'm, I'm rolling with that, but, uh, yeah, there's a lot of fun things happening. Um, this season, um, her, um, having some friendships with, uh, the indigenous people there in what Prince Edward Island and a little bit of looking, um, for her uh, birth family. Um, so that, that's been really fun. I'm only two episodes in. And um, so, yeah, I don't even know how many episodes there are, but I'm super excited to get that going. Um, my husband and I have been watching the, or we actually just finished the latest season of Better Call Saul, which is a spinoff from Breaking Bad. I, it's like Breaking Bad light in a way. <laughs> and so totally, totally love that. Um, I need a new um, PBS series is what I, what I really need. Um, oh, I wonder. No, no, no. I think I've read, done all the crown. But yeah, I need to like go back to the PBS app and see if I can rewatch or find something new. So if you have any um, any British, you know, cozy mysteries or, you know, any of the period um, shows that I've never talked about, just feel free to share them with me because I'm looking, I'm looking for some new things to watch. I wish I could find um, Shetland, which is a mystery series that's um, in Scotland. I really wish I could find the rest of those um, seasons. They tease you by, you know, like they drop four seasons, but I think there's three other seasons, but I don't even know where to find them. So anyway, so that's what's kind of going on. Um, TV watching, please uh, hop on the Simple Handmade Everyday Facebook group. If you've got book recommendations, show recommendations, we're all, you know, crafters and readers and, and uh, TV watchers. So please uh, be part of the conversation and share. Oh, the other thing is I've been listening to some podcasts too. Are you familiar with Tish Oxenreiter? She started years ago with the blog um, Simple Mom, which she just, you know, like turned into a whole big, huge empire. She's written several books. She's done several podcasts and she's on to a new podcast um, called The Good List. And frankly, I'm a little jealous because I'm like, oh, that is in fact a fabulous idea for a podcast. They're only about 15 minutes long. And um, her sort of tagline for it is it's a podcast about art, habits, ideas, and things that make life better. And they're just like little things that are making her happy. And I haven't listened to that many episodes, but the one I listened to this morning is called A Small Fiction, where she just shares about how she learned in an English class um, early on that people learn best through storytelling. And that is 100% true. <laughs> when um, when we were homeschooling, we used a curriculum called Story of the World. And I remember more history from that curriculum that was told, told very much in a story um, fashion than I do from any history class I've ever been a part of. But um, she goes on to share a Twitter account. And I'm not actually on Twitter. Um, but so I never would have found this. But there's a Twitter account called A Small Fiction where this guy writes, I think, I think that Twitter is now, um, it's not 140, I think maybe it's 280 characters. He writes a short story from beginning to end in one tweet. And they're not little throwaway things. She read a bunch of them. I won't do that. You can, I'll put a link in the show notes and you can pop over there. But they are like, like poignant, like, like little, like things that make you, um, you know, 
really think about it. Like there's, okay, I will kind of tell you, he's going to do it. He obviously told it much better, but it's basically about a, um, a, a girl who, um, built a time machine and she's kind of realizing that she, um, doesn't really like going back, um, you know, far away because it creates paradoxes. But, and she's telling somebody this, but what she mostly does is goes back in small hops to just redo conversations with people and when they haven't gone right. And the person said, really? And she said, yeah, you'd be surprised how many times it, you know, it takes to get it right. And then the person was like, yeah, I don't really get that. And then she was, the, the person was like, yeah, okay, I'll see you soon. <laughs> Because you, know, you know she's going to go back and redo that conversation. So just like funny, like just weird little things like that. So anyways, I'll put a link in the show notes um, to The Good List and maybe even to the Twitter account for a small fiction, which I think sounded uh, really cool. And the other kind of random thing that I wanted to talk to you about is Lisa, who is the curvy quilter on um, Instagram, who makes like amazing um, like cathedral windows quilts and pin cushions and like, she does a ton of stuff with um, the quilting in the rain uh, fabric and I was the lucky recipient of a cathedral windows um, pin cushion that she made for quilt market she shared with me she did a little recording it was so cute thank you for this Lisa where um, with Alexa she got a little like a Alexa or a echo dot or what what are the <laughs> I don't have one I think it's called an echo dot you can say Alexa play Simple Handmade Everyday Podcast, and it does. <laughs> so she did this little recording where, you know, I have very long episode titles. <laughs> and so, you know, it kind of went on and on and on as, as she's reading the, Alexa is reading the title. But anyways, if you have um, one of those little smart speaker things, you can definitely play the podcast by just giving that command. And I thought that was very cool. So thank you for sharing that. Let's move on to homemaking. You know, I'm going to just keep preaching Fly Lady to people because so many people are getting in touch with me saying that I am back on the Fly Lady routines and it's being really helpful. If you want a little inspiration, my guru, Diane in Denmark, who's way more my guru than the actual Fly Lady, has a new series going on right now called New Year, New You, where she actually... Um, has embedded videos that she did a few years ago. Like she, she's rerunning the series. So she introduces them and then she reruns them. And there's something interesting about that. She is a huge proponent of this thing called dressing your truth. Um, I don't know. Someday I will talk about dressing your truth, but it's a whole, you know how you've got like the Myers-Briggs or Enneagram. Well, this is just another way to put yourself into a little box. <laughs> and so there's like four types of people and, and um, how you dress, you know, can be sort of confined by that. That sounds negative, but it's really a good thing. I'm a type two. It has really helped me to figure that out. But what's funny is that when Diane in Denmark got into this, she mistyped herself as a type four. And in her old videos, she wears very um, dark clothes and has a very severe hairstyle. It, it is it is not is it's not becoming on her. And at some point along the line, she realized I'm not a type four. I'm a type one, which is a light and bright and um, you know very upbeat cheerleader type, um, in, which is sort of lighter clothes. And she's completely changed the way her hair and her makeup and the way she dresses. And she. It's, it's like a stark comparison. She looks so amazing now. And when you go back and you look at it, you just think, oh, that was so wrong. So just it's that's a very it's a side note, but that's um, dressing your truth. So you can see a, a little example of that if you watch those. But those are great videos um, to kind of get you back on the fly lady routine. Um, one thing that I uh, recently did was I reorganized my recipes. Do you have... Um, like a system for that. So what the way I do is I used to have a lot of, um, uh, what are they called? Like cooking magazines. And so I'd rip res recipes out of those. Plus, you know, I print them and I would put them in, um, those, you know, sheet protectors. So I have a whole system for how, um, I do that, including the, uh, there, there's a pocket in the front of each section for the recipes that haven't been tried. And then once I've used them and they've sort of passed the test, then I put them in the sheet protector so that I can use them over. But I, that whole binder system had gotten so out of hand that I just kind of stopped using it. And I thought it was going to be like this big 2020. I'm going to, you know, get back on it and organize my recipes when in fact I sat down and I just did it in 30 minutes. 
<laughs> which has been great because now I'm going through those old recipes and, and I don't even need to find new recipes because there's recipes in there I haven't done in 10 years. So that has been um, a, a huge relief to me. And I'd love to know how you guys uh, organize your recipes. I will put that maybe as a prompt on the... Um, on the Facebook group, but I am actually doing some new recipes because I'm kind of delving into more of a Mediterranean diet. And um, so I discovered a blog and YouTube channel called The Mediterranean Dish and um, have done a shrimp and orzo soup and a completely amazing roasted cauliflower recipe. Now I roast vegetables all the time, but this has different spices on it and nuts and um, lemon juice is really good. So I'll, I'll put some links in the show notes there. But um, if you're looking for a little bit of, of healthy Mediterranean food inspiration, the Mediterranean dish, um, I've really been loving it. And she has just really great videos. So before we go, I do want to thank some people for leaving reviews. It made me so happy when I sat down today and I saw I had two very nice reviews. You, you people are so kind. So thank you to Gigi and SC and the Cottage Gardener for leaving reviews. I'm up to 50 reviews, which is very exciting to me. Um, so if you feel so inspired, please leave a review or a rating or share this with a friend if you think they would enjoy it. Um, so now... I'm going to once again tell you, go vote on Pillow Fight. <laughs> and um, thanks for spending this time with me. Um, if you want to visit me online, you can visit me on the blog, Simple Handmade Every Day at KristenEsser.com. I'm on Instagram at, at Kristen Esser. And on Facebook, just search for the Simple Every Handmade. <laughs> what is the name of my podcast? Simple Handmade Every Day. Um, Facebook group, there's a page which you can just like and to, to follow things if you're so inclined, or you can join the group, which is a private group um, where you can keep this conversation going. All right, you guys have a great day. 